Sure, no problem. Okay. Oh, really? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? What happened? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, we, we still have two, two more minutes, just uh, wait. I, I, I need to introduce you first, then you can start afterwards. Okay. Okay, uh, let's start it. And good morning and good, good night or good afternoon, everyone. And it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker for the Applied Reinforced Learning Seminar. And it has been almost two years. And uh, today's uh, the topic is about image to image transformations with deeper reinforced learning. Uh, we, it's my great honor to introduce the two speakers. The first one is Dr. Uh, Xin Wang is a, a current senior machine learning scientist at the Kaya Medical Seattle, USA. He received his PhD in computer science from University of Burnley, the, the State University of the New York. 
uh, in 2015. His research interests uh, are in uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and medical imaging, computing, CV, and uh, media uh, oh, wow. for sex. He's a senior member of the IEEE. And our second speaker is the Shiwei Liu, is the SNNY and Empire Innovation Professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of the Buffalo State University of New York. And uh, he has a very distinguished career. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, he received his PhD so, from the Dartmouth College. <laughs> And Dr. Lee's research interests include computer vision and machine learning. He, he has published uh, over 170 ref refereed journals and conference papers. He's a recipient of the IEEE Signal Processing Best Paper Award in 2011 and the ASF Career Award in 2010, and also the University Presidential Award for Excellent in Research and Creative Activities, and, uh, and also and he has many other honors, and also he's a fan of the IEEE. Welcome. Hume, you can start. Okay, okay, let me uh, share my screen. Uh, thank you for the great uh, introduction. Um, and thanks for the organizer, and thanks everyone for coming. So uh, today's talk is about RIL for image to image translation. Uh, Oh, um, so this talk uh, covered our two recent publications uh, in EJK and uh, Triple I recently. Uh, for more details, please refer to the online uh, version. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, these papers are from the collaborations of Clear Medical, CUIT, and the University at Buffalo. So I will start the topic. So uh, the I2IT uh, just uh, uh, translate the image from a source domain or target domain. So many computer vision tasks could be considered as uh, the I2IT problem. Uh, for example, uh, face in painting, uh, the source image is a crop face and target image uh, is a full face or translate a face image across age or translate a face uh, to its uh, character face or, uh, or a neural style transfer from image to cartoon image, or translate edge uh, to photo, a uh, simulation map to photo, uh, and uh, some other uh, medical image registration could also be considered as the IT problem. And also uh, digital transform. So this task is very flexible. So uh, in the supervised at IT, usually we train the model with aligned image pairs. For example, uh, for, face paint, for face in painting task, the, the source image and tar target image are aligned. And uh, usually for the uh, supervised IT problem, the uh, image pairs are not aligned. For example, the self transfer task or medical image registration, this image are not uh, aligned. So let's see the uh, existing uh, solution. Usually, uh, the most of the recent uh, existing work are, are based on DR based solution. Uh, they use a uh, one-step DL model like AEs, UNET, and the conditional guides. Uh, uh, they generate a target image in a single run. Let's see our first uh, example using uh, conditional guide. So given uh, X, X is an edge image, uh, generator translates it to, the, to, a, uh, oh, uh, okay. uh, to a photo, and then both the photo and the edge are passed to the descriptor to judge whether uh, they are uh, real or not. So during testing, uh, the generator could translate the uh, edge image uh, uh, to a photo. This is the uh, traditional dr based method. But there are some limitations about such method. As we know, uh, the image to, to image translation uh, tasks are usually, uh, uh, usually have a very high dimensional uh, input image. Uh, uh, most of cases, uh, uh, they are um, 10, 20, right? And, Handle such a complex uh, problem. So the, the one step model usually need to have very complex structures, many layers, and tons of parameters. And such model uh, are, are difficult to train and how long training time. And also because of the large model size, they are hard to deploy on the small devices, uh, such as a phone. Uh, so let's see our idea. 
So our idea is to uh, decompose the one-step learning process into small steps by a multi-step model with lighter weight. So our goal is to improve the quality of the model progressively. So let's use this uh, random digits uh, transformizing example to explain our idea. So for example, the source image is number eight, the target, the target image is uh, zero. Uh, uh, the image are translated to, to the, the source uh, uh, image are translated to the target image uh, by a stepwise model. So it uh, can clearly see what happened in this process, right? The, the model moves the source image a little bit in, in, in one step and then keep doing this progressively. So compared with the one step DR model, our model have a better inter interpretability and then we, we, we know what, what happens here. And then because of our, our, our model is stepwise, so in each step we don't need to a very large model. We, we can use a simple model to do this. But we, sometimes, uh, we can see this is kind of, we, we use time to exchange performance. And for example, if we, uh, in, a, in a small device, we want an okay, uh, okay result, just run a few steps, but you want a better result, just run more steps. And uh, on the right, this is a video to show our stepwise results. So this is our idea. And then uh, let's see the concrete model. So let's use the DR, uh, deformable image restriction. Uh, I will call it DR for convenience uh, as an example. So the DR is to establish a, a special nonlinear dense correspondence between a pair of fixed and moving image. Uh, uh, in I2IT task is just a target and source, it's just a move the source image to a target image. So the traditional DR solution just uh, concatenated the, the source image and target image and put them together uh, into a CNN and then predict the deformation field and then apply uh, and, and apply the deformation field uh, to the uh, source image to get a particular mood image and then uh, calculate the resolution loss uh, to learn, uh, learn the whole Whole thing. I know that in this model only the CNN part has uh, parameters. Uh, this this STA just uh, uh, some uh, they, they just uh, make some transform differentiable and make the whole thing uh, be trained by buffer backup or propagation. Yeah. So this is the uh, traditional DR based method. Uh, but uh, because of the uh, the complexity of I2I task, uh, such model usually uh, very complex. So. Let's see our uh, RL-based uh, solution. So this is our RL-based model. So uh, our state is that also concatenation of the new predicted mood image and the target image. At the, at the beginning, we, we, we initialize the mood image with the source image. We also concat them together and put them into the policy and then uh, uh, predict the uh, deformation field. In our setting, this deformation field is the action. And then we apply the, we apply the action to the uh, image to get uh, a new uh, move image, um, and we repeat, re repeat this uh, resolution process uh, stepwise, stepwisely, and then get the final results. Uh, yeah, this is our model. So, so let's see uh, what 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 what's the challenge here. So, all the reason works how applied DRL to solve the vision task. Uh, the action space is still uh, discrete and it cannot be used for I2IT uh, that require high dimensional and continuous action space. Uh, as uh, as, as uh, we mentioned before, our action is a, a large deformation field, which has the same uh, size with the input image. That's, that's is different uh, with, uh, all, with all the previous uh, uh, DRL models. So recently, uh, the soft actor creative SAD has been applied to solve a continuous action uh, task. Uh, uh, but it is still hard to handle very high dimensional states and action effectively. I think in their model, their, their continuous action are around uh, 20 dimensional, I think, uh, 21 around, yeah. So it, it, is still too, it is still a very low dimensional action space. So let's see uh, our general framework. So to solve uh, such complex problem, we, uh, uh, introduce a new concept plan. So our, uh, our plan breaks the decision-making process into two steps, uh, from stage to plan, and, uh, from plan to action. So uh, I will uh, go over this and then, and then explain the motivation. So plan is just a, a, a subspace of uh, uh, appropriate actions based on the current state. 
So it's not applied to the state directly. It's used to get the actor to generate a tractable high dimensional action. So the motion is very uh, simple. When there is a complex thing, right? You want, if you want to do this complex thing, you can make a simple plan, right? And then judge whether the plan is good or not. And then based on this simple plan, and, and also do very complex uh, tractable actions. And uh, judge, uh, maybe judge a simple plan uh, is uh, better than judge a complex action. Yeah. So may, our, our motivation is to uh, add an intermediate uh, transition between the state and action. So uh, for the actor, the plan uh, has a much more dimension compared with the state, right? Uh, uh, for, uh, which is easier for the actor to learn the predicted actions, right? So the actor input uh, is the plan uh, instead of the state. For the creative, uh, plan can be evaluated by the creative uh, efficiently. Since it is uh, since it is easier to learn in the uh, low dimensional space for the creative, right? Uh, and then this is our motivation. So our uh, framework have three uh, component: new network component, um, planner, actor, uh, creative. We have an actor planner uh, part, right? Uh, which is different from the uh, classic actor creating model. So our planner, uh, just like the way we uh, use planner to learn uh, uh, Gaussian, yeah, and sample the plan, right? And then the plan is passed to the actor, and the actor to um, generate a, a, a executable action that interact with the element, right? And the plan uh, could be also passed to the critic uh, for evaluation uh, how this plan is good or not, because it's low dimensional and it's easier for the critic to evaluate. Yeah, and then uh, let's see how we train this model. So this part, uh, for this pathway, the planner uh, actor uh, way, uh, and then generate a differential field. This is like a general, uh, a general uh, resolution um, learning method. It, uh, it, uh, uh, they use a differential field apply on a moving image, and again, the predict the moving image, and then uh, they uh, calculate the resolution loss, uh, and then, between the planner and the actor. So for this part, it's uh, uh, something like uh, 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 RL part of training. So the planner generates the plan, the plan is passed to the critic uh, with, uh, with the state and then learn by, uh, could be a, a PPO, SAC, any RL based method. So uh, for the reward, <coughs> we suggest as this is a high level, uh, High level uh, abstract representation of the action, right? So for the real reward for this part, we suggest to use the structure similarity, for example, as an M dash, something like that. And for this uh, executable action, as they applied on the image directly, so we, we could use uh, pixel level uh, uh, metric as a, a learning loss, something like uh, MSC, PSNR. And uh, yeah, local local things. Pixel level thing, pixel level thing. Let's use a very uh, core example to explain this, which is uh, uh, much simpler compared with uh, that abstract figure. So it's uh, just uh, <coughs> uh, image resolution, right? And then move the soft image to the to the target image, and we use that reward. And uh, for the state, we just uh, simply concatenate them together and pass to the planner. The planner. Uh, sample the uh, uh, sample the uh, plan and the plan pass to the uh, actor to uh, generate a uh, action and then the action is applied on a source image then uh, get a predict image and then supervised by a resolution loss then for this uh, for this way uh, the plan is the plan says is passed to the uh, critic to do the IL pass uh, supervision uh, uh, supervision yeah and then let's see some uh, evaluation. We can see that uh, for uh, all the numbers and for this stepwise method, we compare with a uh, uh, traditional and a uh, famous method of uh, Vox Morphe. We have better that's work, right? And uh, for also for visual quality, uh, we have uh, more uh, clear uh, visual quality. And also uh, we can see the deformation, our predicted deformation field uh, is here. 
So this is the evaluation on the MNIST uh, this set. Uh, let's see the evaluation on the medical images. Uh, as we know, uh, image restoration is an important task in the medical imaging, uh, which can be used in medical uh, clinical applications, uh, uh, such as assisting uh, diagnosis and uh, uh, minimally invasive surgery, as they have several cameras that they need to align them together. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, as, we, as we mentioned before, our uh, step, my, step of like method can improve the small, uh, the, the, can improve the model uh, progressively. We can see <clears throat> when we do restoration in each step, our reward is keep increasing, no decreasing. Yeah. But when we uh, do the same thing with a uh, one step uh, their, uh, their base model, uh, their reward increase and uh, increase, maybe increase on the first step, and then uh, they will, after uh, repeating, they will uh, decrease. So that's the uh, that's advantage of our method. Uh, the, these are um, uh, 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 visual uh, comparison of our method and other uh, method. Yeah, I, we can see that. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, our results have a uh, better alignment uh, co compared with the other method. Uh, so um, let's see, uh, let's see uh, stepwise uh, evaluation. So um, the so the RL based method, uh, uh, our uh, uh, SPAC and the PPO, we, we just uh, uh, the RL, RL part could, could use any uh, any RL uh, learning method, uh, SAC, PPO, DDPG, that's all fine. Uh, performs more stable than the DL based method. And uh, our uh, uh, SPAC uh, achieved the best performance. I see uh, <clears throat> along the steps, yeah, uh, our performance keep increasing. Yeah, I think uh, the SAC uh, actually have um, actually helpful for the continuous task to learn. Yeah, and. Um, and here we summarize the purpose of our method with uh, other state of the art method. Yeah, I think uh, uh, in the, our uh, our spec outperforms out other methods overall the and the 3D data set. Yeah, uh, this is a 2D uh, uh, 2D brain image and this is a, a 3D image. This is a silver data set. This is a, a uh, uh, RSP data set, they, they, this is a cross data set, uh, evaluation uh, data set. They, uh, they use uh, uh, humans for, for training and test, uh, and the test uh, data set is a pig, a silver image. Uh, let's see uh, computational complexity. So, uh, uh, this figure shows the trade off between the death scroll and the inference time uh, where all they said. Uh, we can see uh, X, X is our uh, inference time, and then our uh, the, the left corner, the left up corner uh, means better result. Uh, we can see our model uh, how, ba how better inference time and how uh, better reward compared with the uh, existing DR based method on this set. Uh, let's see more applications. Uh, this is this is uh, on medical image restoration. So uh, for film painting, yeah, um, uh, the in the, the state is the original image uh, with a uh, missing region that the, the cropped image. The next state is uh, obtained by adding the new plate image to the missing region. Yeah, uh, and uh, let's go over this. I will show the a structure field which is more clear than this. The rule, the rule is uh, PSNR, and uh, we can use uh, more solution like R1 loss and uh, adversal loss, because uh, on the on the on the upper part, you can use any loss to supervise the model to train the player and uh, uh, the actor. So we use uh, adversal loss because of uh, this. The goal of uh, facing painting is to generate a realistic image. So 
get lost maybe help uh, in such case. So let's say uh, this is a framework. The source image is a crop face and target image is a full face. We, we also concat them together and then, oh no, no, this is not concatenated. The, the state is just uh, the crop the face. Uh, and uh, the reward is PSNR. We just uh, put a crop, crop, uh, crop the face uh, into the uh, planner and then sample the plan and then uh, we predict the missing part. And then for the missing part, we use uh, our wireless, we use the gallop, we can use any gallop here, and you can use L2. So the framework is very flexible to design, uh, depend, depending on the depending on your uh, your requirement. Yeah, and then for this uh, critic part, the state and the plan are passed to the critic uh, to evaluate how the, how the plan is good, the plan, how, how, how the plan is. So here we have our actual descriptor to, to make the photo looks uh, realistic. Yeah, we have tried to use this on the whole face, but the uh, experimental results show that uh, this crowd part uh, may, uh, could have a better performance. Yeah, it's, uh, this framework is quite, it's quite simple, right? It's very flexible to solve any IT problem because uh, on, in this way, you can add any loss you want depends on your requirement, right? And uh, for this way, for this uh, actor, uh, actor uh, for this planner uh, crit uh, critical way, uh, you can use a uh, structure level, high level reward uh, to supervise uh, uh, both planner and uh, uh, critic. So let's see uh, some uh, face and painting results. Yeah, I think um, all method, uh, 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 did, did, did how better uh, visualization quality? Uh, did this indicate we use the PSNR or SSM as the reward? Actually, it's, it looks uh, uh, the SSM has a, a slight better result, right? Because uh, it's a uh, 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 global structure level match. So, but I think both looks fine, yeah. Um, and then we compare with uh, the classic facing painting method and the, uh, and the general painting method, uh, we can achieve better results. And uh, this is a uh, uh, study about uh, the gap. And then uh, we try different gap loss. Uh, we can see uh, that uh, as again, achieve better results. But, this is only this task, maybe for other tasks, you can choose your, your supervisation method. And again, we use for, uh, use for this. And then uh, let's see um, more applications. Uh, this is for a risk for model, a realistic photo translation. Yeah, so the initial state is uh, just a source image uh, uh, like a simulation mask. Right, uh, net, uh, or uh, uh, edge image, and the next uh, state state is obtained by uh, wrapping. Uh, on the, oh, here uh, this type of next state is just so we translate the the real image. Let's see. This is uh, uh, this is uh, the application. So the input is a uh, simple mask, right, and the output um, uh, is uh, a real image. Um, we, we compared uh, a classic pixel pixel pen uh, uh, and pixel so uh, AP and the DR pen answer. I think uh, our method have a more clear result, right? And then this is uh, a translated edge to a photo. Yeah, and uh, our method has uh, better details. Um, and this is a uh, translate um, mask, uh, translate the mask to the uh, real photo or translate a uh, photo to mask. Uh, we can see that uh, our method, um, for example, for our, our method uh, has better details uh, for the small parts. Yeah, and for the realistic image, our method has a uh, more clear edge compared to the UCC and other method. 
Yeah, and this is the uh, numbers. Uh, we uh, we evaluate uh, uh, for RTID uh, some mask, uh, uh, include uh, semantic mask uh, uh, to real uh, to real uh, images and add to images, and then uh, we also evaluate uh, our um, our IL part with PPO, and this our this ICC, and then we can see most of the case ICC has a better results, and then uh, uh, this is a. Uh, this is also evaluated. Uh, this is also e evaluate uh, uh, the IL, IL part. So the PPO, DDPG, and ours. We can see along the episode, our method has the best uh, uh, reward curve. Uh, this is the red curve. Uh, let's see the computational complexity. So let's just use a realistic photo translation as an example. So our model as our stepwise uh, model. So we have uh, much less uh, parameters. So we have a lower competition and complexity. Uh, yeah, compared to this uh, existing method, um, our model is a light, lighter weight model. So it's the table one just uh, compared at uh, least the comparison of the number of the parameters of, uh, and the flows um, with this uh, 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 state of the art. Uh, let, let's uh, summary um, our work. So uh, our uh, RL framework uh, is proposed to handle the actual IT problem. So we propose a, a plan con uh, concept which is defined in a latent subspace and can add actor to generate a high dimensional excuse action. So um, our model usually uh, good policy is uh, in spaces with high dimensional continuous action and state. So um, our model, um, we are the first to propose uh, IR model to the IIT problem. So yeah, and achieve the state of the art. And uh, in future, we will uh, extend our model to um, uh, all the or other uh, FIT tasks, other tasks. So, so I think our uh, major contributions are twofold. First, we uh, we propose a very simple but effective uh, RL uh, framework uh, to handle uh, I2IT IT problem, which has a very high dimensional. Uh, uh, continuous actions. First, the second one, our RL framework uh, is very flexible. As uh, we can see, uh, we can use any uh, supervision method to train the planner and uh, critic and a uh, planner critic and the uh, actor depend on the specific tasks. Yes, and then uh, we jump off, jump out of the constraint of the uh, traditional IR constraints about actions. Um, they are low demand and discrete. I think uh, the traditional uh, the traditional IR uh, may be humbly limited because of the action space. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's uh, our talk. And then if you have any questions, you can ask the questions. Everyone has the questions, you can type it in the chat. Uh, I, I have a question. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Bin Dong. I'm from Peking University. Um, very interesting talk. I have, uh, I have a question on, uh, you know, on the specific uh, M MDP that you set up there. Um, the first question is your Q value function um, is uh, it depends on the state and, and the plan. Um, so the plan, since it's a low dimensional, um, you know, some kind of latent representation of your actual action. Am I right? So it's, yeah. uh, right. okay. So, so, so then it has to be a low fidelity version uh, of your action. 
Um, so my first question is, do you observe, um, you know, losing some detailed, for example, for, you know, for, for the registration problem, do you, um, do, you do, do you have trouble, you know, aligning the, you know, the, 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 the small scale, uh, you know, boundaries? Or do you, do, do you lose any, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, details when you do it this way? Because your, your value function evaluates on the, uh, the low fidelity part of mm -hmm. your, your action rather than the actual action. So that's uh, my first question. And the, uh, the second question is also related to this. So you, it seems like you have modified the original you know, MB, uh, MDP. It's, it's kind of like a palm DP, partially observed MDP, where you know it's you you know you modify the original um, uh, a state uh, you know to the observed state, then that actually changes the uh, um, you know the the algorithm. If you ignore that and just 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 train it you know like a regular uh, RL, then you you know sometimes you, you you have some you know you you lose some accuracy. But I, I wonder if you have some special treatment uh, for your you know the the, the plan based MDP or or you don't observe. Uh, any trouble, you know, training it. So, yeah, that's my question. Okay, thank you for the question. That's a really good question. So, the, for the uh, first question, uh, we have uh, first of all for the first question, uh, uh, we won't uh, lose the detail things because of in the in this part, in this way. So the the the, the task is supervised by the traditional uh, supervised method. For example, this registration, right? This is a completely uh, have the same with the DL based method, right? So for this part, we won't lose any detailed parts. So, and also, um, we also do some uh, elevation study. We put the, well, we put we put this action into the uh, critic. We concatenate the action with this state and into the critic. Um, and then uh, we compare with the, uh, the operation that we plan into the quick uh, the results so that could plan uh, into the critic uh, achieve the better result because because um, due to uh, we think uh, because the plan uh, is easier um, to learn for the critic another thing we separate uh, the our goal um, in two parts in this plan pass our reward is usually use a structure level reward for example SSM that something like this we focus on uh, we, we focus on improve the uh, uh, structural level similarity uh, using our RL part. But after uh, plan pass to the actor, we generate a, uh, a, a, a uh, excludal action for this part. We use some DL traditional DL based method like a GAN, like a one, like two. Then we don't lose the uh, details. So I think. Uh, um, this uh, separate the two goals uh, uh, um, in a better way. Uh, for example, if you use traditional uh, one step DL method, you have different goals. You, you just, you, you, the only way you can do is you use a, a weighted combination, put them together, and then as a loss function. But here, in our frame, framework, we, we separate them, we separate them. For, for, for the RL part, we we focus on improving the global structure level of, the, uh, of similarity. And for the, uh, this, we call DR part, we focus on improve the uh, pixel level, or we can say uh, the house level performance. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you for the question. If there are no other questions, I think your, your advisor is coming, right? Oh, oh, is coming, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor, you uh, are going to talk uh, something about this work? I I, I don't know. He's, you see, he's on the uh, picture Zoom. Um, let, me, let me check. She's she she's she said uh he said he uh join us. I'm not I'm not sure. I have a a, a, a few questions because it seems to me your your what's your reward in this framework you're you're working? 
uh, in in uh, we I think uh, we use uh, tax reward and SSM reward uh, for reward because they are uh, structure level uh, metric. I think we we have tried both, and for uh, and for the um, for this talk, uh, for this uh, paper, yeah, this is the earlier paper, 2021. Uh, we use uh, PSR as I think it's all got an okay result, but uh, uh, in the 2022, we found uh, uh, this uh, rule we, I, I just said for the IO part, I think uh, we can just uh, use a structural level reward. And for this part, uh, for the out this part, we use. Uh, uh, pixel level supervision, uh, but but yeah. I think it's depend on the task. They depend on the specific tasks. What one question I have is because in one of the example you mentioned that you can combine this IO with the GAN, right? You want yes. to generate uh, your your you divide the task in multiple small scales, then do the order together, right? So yes. that you can get a better uh, performance. Compare with yes. the existing guns. Uh, yes. But uh, you, you, you know that the the the, the guns urine and uh, like you can compare with the VAE or other methods, and uh, basically the 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 for many methods we we. Like if we VAE, we can get a, we can get a exactly low dimension representation for the images, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And but for the GANs, they it's not that uh, straightforward. You have to do additional um, work to do that. Oh, uh, uh, for the GANs, uh, let's see. But that's my question to you: is if I combine the IL with uh, with the gang, you still have the problems like uh, what the gang has, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, we That matter. Uh, mm. It's just uh, used to judge whether uh, this uh, particular image looks uh, real or not. So I think uh, as we uh, as uh, compared to the uh, traditional GAN, uh, that, uh, which uh, uh, convert a uh, random noisy to an image, right here uh, we have uh, uh, VE, right, and then we have deep connections to stabilize uh, this whole thing, uh, which made training the GAN uh, description part easier. So uh, we don't have a problem uh, about gun here. So yeah. Okay. Uh, can I ask another question just to follow up? Um, I've, I've been trying to understand why you don't have the the trouble of you know when you have you 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 said it in your talk that when you have a a, a huge action space um, mm. that uh, you know RL itself would have a lot of trouble. Training, you know that that's why mm -hmm. AlphaStar they 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 they, they, they do this you know multi stage decomposition of their actions. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. it seems to me that you get around it, uh, you know, uh, by the help of supervised learning. Am I am I correct in that? And and, and that's also why you don't um, even though your um, your your Q value function uh, you know evaluates on the plan, but you don't actually lose much accuracy because. Uh, the supervised loss helps a lot. Uh, if that's correct, then my question is, uh, what's the you know what's the uh, you know what's the benefit of RL in here? You know how does this actually compensate for for supervised learning? Okay, so actually, um, actually, um, so uh, uh, let's see, let's see this. Uh, yes, uh, because. Uh, we we also we are step by step model where right? you can use R uh, L to do a very uh, to can do a can do a step wise to solve this problem and then uh, we don't need a very uh, complex model uh, to solve the big problem so we can 
improve the result uh, progressively, right? So our model is easy to train compare with a much bigger big data model. So we can see our parameter is uh, less parameter. So in our in, in the future in the our current future work, we have developed a model with more uh, with less uh, with less uh, parameters. Okay, so 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 you're saying that uh, your RL is actually easier to train than supervised learning. Um, yes, because our model set okay. is much smaller. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, and, and another advantage is uh, the interpretability, interpretability of our model. During the transition process, we can see what happened here. Right? Uh, yeah, well, well while you're on this page, I'm just curious that um, when you do inference for different images, the length of the trajectory are different. Am I right? Yes. Because that's, that's one advantage that I can think of using RL uh, because then that means you you have a you know you have a model that is adaptive in terms of depth. Um, well, actually, we, you know, we, uh, we had a, a couple of previous works, you know, just specifically taking advantage of of RL in that regard. Um, so then, I don't know whether you have done tests to see how uh, another another thing you know great about RL that's well that's also our group found is that it has um, uh, extraordinary auto distribution uh, generalization. Uh, for example, you train on, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, take your registration as example, you have a you know, bunch of images that has, you know, moderate, uh, you know, moderate size of deformation, but, but, but when you have a, a, a new task with, you know, you know a, a large uh, range of deformation, uh, for RL, it, it is sort of, you know, generalized to that as well, but for supervised learning, Normally, you couldn't generalize, um, yeah. and, and for ink painting, what right? You, you, you know, when you train it with the similar size of you know ink painted regions, but when you when you when you do inference, you choose a very different size or even shapes of the uh, uh, of the boxes. I think RL may generalize, but for supervised learning, they may have the the problem. But I I don't know whether you have observed something like that because I don't I don't see it from your from your talk. Uh... Oh, you you mean the generalist? You mean compare? Uh, you mean compare the generalist generalization ability between our model and the DL model, right? Right. So let me rephrase a little bit. So so for 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 DL model, the depth is pretty much fixed, um, yes. and and for for RL, the depth is dynamic. So yes. so so just think of any task that can can take advantage of that. For example, if you know you do uh, you do extrapolation in terms of noise level. You do extrapolation in terms of you know the size of the deformation of registration or the size of the in painting. I think RL has to be, uh, you know, it has yes. to be you know advantageous, right? Over, uh, you know, over supervised learning. That that's at least what what what, what, what we found. It's just I'm I'm just uh, I'm just a little bit um, skeptical yeah. on um, you know RL beating uh, beating uh, supervised learning. Um, you know, for, for you know, you know, for uh, for for ink distribution <laughs> generalization, <laughs> and and normally, if you're solving a problem that is you know combinatorics in nature, then RL is great. Uh, but for regression, I'm just uh, I'm just a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm not questioning your result. Your result looks looks great. I just find it's hard to to understand. Um, you know why it's 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 superb uh, comparing to supervised learning, even for ink distribution generalization. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, this is why. Uh, sorry, I joined late and uh, I'm still driving. Uh, but you know, I, I I think that's a great question. Uh, but you know, I just want to give my comments on that. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, you know, the way we use our RL model uh, for this kind of uh, you know problems traditionally solved uh, solved by uh, supervised learning with the deep learning model. It's, it's not only the fact that we train the model using RL, we also use the model 
as a recursive model. So as Shin probably right. presented in his talk, you know, we have between a simpler uh, neural network model, but we use it actually as a stack of all these models. So if you actually unroll it in time, it's not just right. one shadow network. It's actually a, a sequence of shadow networks forming a, uh -huh. a deeper network. Uh, uh -huh. And, and the, actually the trick here is the shadow networks all share similar uh, structures. That's why we train it with, uh, with uh, RL. Um, so okay. I think that the, the magic happens there. You know, the, it gave us the flexibility of dynamically choosing the depths of the neural network. Uh, right. I totally just, agree. Uh, yeah. Right. So I think that's where, you know, that solves the problem. We didn't specifically observe the increase performance on generalization, but I think that's a very, that's an excellent point. Um, and um, so we, we, we are doing this because, you know, we use, we, when we train the model using RL, we train a simpler model. So the chance of this model overfit on the training data is mm -hmm. not as severe as you otherwise use the deeper model, right? And mm -hmm. right, at the right. same time, at the inference time, we start to stack the model, you know, um, um, uh, I, I'm rolling the time, and that's corresponding to using a deeper model. Uh, right, so so right. we're sort of doing this implicit regularization because, mm -hmm. you know, we have a simpler model structure, trained it with RL, but when we actually deploy it in practice, it's still a deep model, and it can be mm -hmm. you know, as deep as we want it to be. So I think that's, mm -hmm. that may be a reason uh, for this, but, but I have to say we, we haven't really put any uh, attention to the to the point you raised, and, and we we will look at that uh, in the in the subsequent work. Yeah. That's right. an excellent point. Okay, thank you, thank you for the answer. Yeah, that's uh, no really clear, clear clear things up. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the thank you. are you going to give, give something, give a presentation or not? I, I don't. <laughs> I think she she will do a good job. She has done a good job. Uh, I just I'm, I apologize for joining late. I have a another administrative meeting. I really cannot get off. Uh, and uh, I'm driving my daughters to uh, to a music uh, event, so uh, I, I'm I'm on the road, so I cannot turn on my camera. I apologize for that, but you know uh, uh, I, I found the discussion very very interesting. Okay, I think uh, thanks uh, all the. the uh, both speakers and also thanks uh, uh, Bindong for, for wonderful questions. And uh, I think uh, that's the end of today. I thank you for everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for everyone. And thanks thank for you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Right. yes. Please feel free to send us emails or uh, contact you know, uh, if you're interested to know more about our work. Thank you very much. Yeah. And sorry again for joining late.